Thanks very much, everyone, for the opportunity to talk to you here this afternoon. Um, it's very tempting, Kevin, to talk about aviation instead. Um, that would be uh, quite a change of pace, but uh, maybe that's uh, better for a beer later on at some stage over a beer. Let me today, ladies and gentlemen, give you a little bit of a, a story on Fortescue and then come back and look at some of the key issues that we see focusing on, uh, fo that we're focusing on as a state. Fortescue is by any measure a fantastic Australian success story. And it's a fantastic WA success story. From its concept around Andrew Forrest's kitchen table back in 2003 to today, where we've already shipped over 760 million tonnes of iron ore to our customers, with first ore production in 2008, so a very short space of time to go from a standing start to full production, and today we're shipping around 170 million tonnes a year to our customers throughout Asia. We are very much focused on optimising the value of our raw bodies to making sure that our employees and anybody that steps foot on a Fortescue site has, a, has an experience which is a safe and productive experience, and to make sure that our communities benefit and grow from the development of our company. Today, while it has been a struggle at times, we are the world's lowest cost iron ore producer. And for us, that is not so much about a badge of honour, but it is about the way that we do things. We are driven by a relentless pursuit, as Kevin said, of chasing down every opportunity of productivity and efficiency around the business. And Fortescue has developed, or should I say, possesses a unique culture because of the attitudes and the approach that each of our people bring to work every single day. Every single day is a new day for us to continue strengthening our unique culture. And it is that that has driven our success. Before I go on though and talk a little bit more about Fortescue, let's take a quick tour of the Pilbara. And let me show you some of the assets that we have, because a lot of people have probably not had the opportunity to go there. Uh, let's not. There we go. What does it take to be a global leader in the iron ore industry? It's a focus. A 100% focus. To achieve our vision to be the safest, lowest cost and most profitable iron ore producer. To empower our people. To discover the world's resources and embrace innovation. To consistently outperform. By maximising value from our world-class infrastructure and assets. While protecting our most valuable asset, our people. At Fortescue, we embrace new ideas and celebrate and respect people's differences. We're focused on building a bright tomorrow by contributing to Australia's economy and strengthening local communities. We are dedicated to empowering generational change and ending Aboriginal disparity through training, education, employment and business opportunities. We are committed to protecting our environment for future generations and respecting the heritage of Australia's first people. Together, we will continue building businesses that benefit the community. Our people will continue to search for innovative solutions and have the courage and determination to implement them. We are delivering on our vision every day. Together, we are Fortescue. From the video, ladies and gentlemen, you get a really strong sense of the culture and values of Fortescue. And let me touch on a couple of those core values, if I could, for a moment. First and foremost to us is safety and family. And we link these two together because the health and well-being of our people 
is our number one priority all the time. And we link that to family because we want to make sure that that flows further than our direct employees into the broader Fortescue family. And family to us is about making sure that we're helping and supporting one another to achieve our goals safely and efficiently, but it's also about maintaining a very strong set of standards and making sure that all of us get to achieve at that highest level. The next one is around setting stretch targets, and there's probably no other core value of Fortescue that draws so much attention. For us, it's not simply about uh, setting a target and with the expectation that we may or may not get it. It's about setting those targets, empowering our people and encouraging our people to do whatever it takes to achieve that. Work back from the vision of where you want to be and figure out how to get there by pulling together as a team, by drawing on the resources and figuring out what we need to do to be successful, particularly about empowering people. We may not know how to get there, but we do know where we want to be. Let's embrace all of the ideas and innovation around the company to do that. And finally, that famous Fortescue determination, or as we call it, never ever give up. If it wasn't for the determination of our founders, Fortescue would never have existed. There were no shortage of barriers and impediments put in the road of Fortescue to try and stop it from ever succeeding. So in some ways, the mere fact the company exists is testament to that famous determination. Our company today, <coughs> pardon me, exists in the Pilbara as one of the most efficient, most productive, and now the lowest cost iron ore producer in the world. We have large, high capacity, highly efficient mining hubs at the Chichester with the Cloud Break and Christmas Creek mines, and at the Solomon Hub with the Kings and Firetail mines. Uh, our rail line connects all of these sites through to Port Hedland, and it is without question the heaviest, fastest heavy haul and most efficient bulk rail system in the world. And Port Hedland is really a jewel in the crown of Western Australia. It is the world's most efficient bulk port and it is an absolute advantage for us as a state. The other key thing about Fortescue is that it's all 100% owned by Fortescue. There are no joint ventures or equity deals or anything else. It is 100% Fortescue. So we've been able to do that by using uh, leverage and debt funding to expand our business and then quickly repay that debt. So today we are able to divert all of the earnings and all of the value that comes from our great company back into the state. We are producing today at about 165 to 170 and that's because we're a market driven company. We look at the market, we talk to our customers and we figure out from that the product strategies and the production strategies that we need to meet the market. The days of anybody being a production driven company I think are long past and no matter what business you're in, whether you're in the Perth airport or whether you're in iron ore mining, you need to look at your market, understand customers and then set about building a delivery system to meet their needs. Our focus on productivity and efficiency is because we know that that's the way to sustainable cost reduction. Cost reduction per se is a very negative process in businesses and by approaching it from that angle, it's quite often not sustainable and you simply have bounce back very shortly after you finish. By looking at it through the eyes and the lens of productivity and efficiency, we're looking to drive long-term structural changes to our supply chain to improve the efficiency. That has given us the title of lowest cost producer in the world, and while that's not the most important thing, it is critically important for us to have a sustainable long-term future to be able to develop the decades and decades of projects we have ahead of us in the Pilbara. I spoke before of our debt repayment Debt was the fastest, most flexible and lowest cost way of funding our business and with the cash flows we're generating today, we're able to repay that debt very quickly and re-gear and re-leverage the company and de-leverage the company. 
and we have had a consistent dividend policy since our first dividend in 2011 because that, again, is incredibly important for us that we take our shareholders on the journey with us. A quick look at the global cost curve and the changes between 2012 and 2016. The reason I'd like to talk to this for a moment, it is very easy to lose sight of why the iron ore uh, price has come down as quickly as it has and to where it has. And that is because the, the world cost of production has reduced quite dramatically. If we look at the difference in oil price and producer currencies, you can see the massive changes that have occurred across the, the, the cost curve globally. Since 2012, we've had expansion in demand, and we've also had the reduction of a lot of high cost production, which has been displaced by the expansions of ourselves, Rio, BHP, and Vale at the very lowest cost end of the production curve. One of the great values, though, that we see in this cost curve is that we still have around a third of the iron ore supplied into China, coming from higher cost production. That means that we have a substantial price buffer above where we're producing today, and that is what's locking in the margins that we're enjoying here in Western Australia. So from our perspective, simply expanding to push all the high cost producers out of the cost curve can only inevitably bring the returns to the industry down. So that's what I meant about being market driven, that we need to keep focused on where our markets are and what the dynamics are in those markets as key indicators for where we should be investing in the future. So let me turn now from Fortescue specifically to look a little broader at Western Australia. As was mentioned before, WA has some marvellous advantages. We enjoy an enviable lifestyle and if you just turn your eyes northwards for a moment and have a look at some of the issues in Beijing during this last winter, you understand just how much of a great lifestyle we do have down here. We are absolutely over-endowed with natural resources. We have pipelines of projects in Western Australia across all of the major resource categories, really, that can keep the state powered for a very, very long time. We are a diverse community and we're working as hard as we can to continue d that diversity because it is through diversity of thought, background, experience, training, that we'll be able to continue to innovate. The last thing we need is to be closed and to have, um, have lost that innovation. And that means education and healthcare, particularly for infants and, and kids, needs to be um, top notch. And here, this means that right through the north of the state, through the Pilbara, through the Kimberley, through the desert, through the eastern gold fields, we need to stay focused and make sure governments are focused around providing the best health care and education we possibly can. We don't want to continue centralising the state so that the only place that people can get those facilities is here in Perth. And finally, hopefully, anyway, we have a stable, responsive government. And this is very important because we need long-term investment horizons. Fortescue has invested over $20 billion, US dollars, in the Pilbara. And we need to know that we've got stability going forward so that we're able to make those investments and the next ones that will come afterwards. We have been blessed with having three of the lowest cost iron ore producers in the world, right here in the Pilbara. The Pilbara is the best address for iron ore in the world. One of the key reasons for that is that while there's a lot of focus on China and in the East right now, over the next two, three, four decades, we'll see the development of all of those emerging economies to the West of China, through Central Asia, India and the Stan countries, the Middle East, and even Northern Africa, which are in relatively easy sea distance from Western Australia. And the one thing those economies are going to use as they develop and urbanise is steel. So we're perfectly placed to provide that. The proximity to China and Asia has also brought with us 
the opportunity for us to have a lot of inbound tourism, a lot of inbound investment, and to leverage our agriculture and energy businesses um, on that same basis, on that growth in Asia. And today, we are lobbying very hard to keep including Australia in the One Belt, One Road initiative to make sure that we're also connected through the modern day Silk Roads that enable trade not only with China, but all of Asia and even into to Europe. Asia is where most of the, the global growth is going to be generated over the decades to come, and we're perfectly positioned for that. And we have a lot of opportunities that we can continue to develop on, even around the fact that we have those three major iron ore producers here in WA. Think of all the industries that can spin off that and benefit the state. Mining can be the catalyst for that. Today, the industry in WA employs around 100,000 people. The royalties that flow from that are now ramped up fully since we've been through the investment phase. And I choose my words carefully because the mining boom never existed and there is no um, decline after the boom. We had a major investment cycle, some of which was delayed from decades before because the industry was starved of capital investment and it wasn't until the price signals became so strident that they couldn't ignore them that people started investing again. And now you could say that investment is covering years ahead as well. So we saw a peak of mining investment but we're now um, reaping the benefits of that through the royalties, the employment and all of the spin-off that's going to come from our industry. We need policies that will attract and continue to support business investment. It is only through economic activity that we can continue to develop the standard of living that we have, particularly in our remote communities. So policies that support and encourage business investment to generate jobs, which means we have strong communities which will then contribute to the strong economy. And for us, one of the key features of that is making sure that as corporate Australia, we have identified and shaped the expectations of our communities. Unbridled expectations in a community can only lead to a massive disconnect and misalignment. So it's a two-way street. We need to be making sure that communities understand what we can deliver as corporates and also what we can't. And then we need to be setting about meeting those expectations and standards of our community. Because there is no difference between corporate and community. We are one and the same. And I think the divisive politics that we've seen of trying to separate somehow corporate Australia from community Australia can only lead to more disconnect and more misalignment in our communities. Let me turn now to a specific opportunity that we have in Western Australia. Right now, Fortescue uh, buys diesel. And what does that mean? It means that we have crude oil pumped out of the ground somewhere up in the Middle East. The benefits of that, we're not really sure of where that flows to. It's then shipped to somewhere in Southeast Asia and refined and then bought through one of the most torturous supply routes you could imagine before it ends up in our minds in the Pilbara, quite often to simply generate electricity. Think about that and then in the context that we have one of the largest reserves of natural gas in WA and we can supply a great amount of the world's energy from our, our gas fields and oil fields here. And yet here we are having to import diesel and, and through a very difficult supply chain to get it to our mines, when in fact a very short pipeline can connect us to those gas fields. We know that long term renewables will form a very important part of our electricity supply and our energy systems in Australia. But in the meantime, let's make sure that we get the maximum advantage out of gas if you like, as a transition fuel for the few decades that it's going to take us until the technology from renewables and storage get to a point where we can rely on them for sustainable, consistent, competitive supply. 
we need to maximise the value of our gas. Most of the gas in Western Australia will never be developed. We have more reserves than will ever be needed in our, in our future because renewables and storage will eventually displace it. So we should be developing our gas reserves as fast as we can, getting the massive advantages of reduced greenhouse gas emissions, lower cost energy, more efficient um, production processes to allow manufacturing, agribusiness, mining, all of those industries to develop off a low energy source. And most importantly, to harvest that energy right here in Western Australia. By importing it from somewhere else, we're not improving greenhouse gas emissions or somehow saving um, Australia or Western Australia. All we're doing is turning our back on one of the most important um, opportunities that we have as low cost efficient energy. Use it or lose it was the very thing that allowed Fortescue to develop. If it wasn't through the WA government enforcing the conditions that were around tenements and mining leases in the Pilbara, then Fortescue would never have existed. So this can have some massive benefits. And just to point that out, the 170 million tonnes of iron ore that we export, the 8,000 jobs, the billions of dollars in taxes and royalties that we generate would have been lost to Australia because in the development of Fortescue, we haven't displaced anybody else. Everyone else has done exactly what they intended to do anyway. So that volume of iron ore and all that economic activity would have been captured by a different country. So use it or lose it, I think, has a perfect example in the iron ore industry here to show how effective it could be. And in terms of our infrastructure, we're all for sharing that infrastructure. Ultimately, renewables and storage are going to drive us that way anyway. Let's start building the infrastructure now to make sure that we can support that. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to talk for a moment about the community. I mentioned before about the alignment between corporate Australia and community Australia. And this is an important concept because I think it's only by aligning those values and expectations that we can get the sort of country and society that we all want. For us, it's very much about working with our local communities, helping to shape their expectations of us and helping to shape, um, helping to meet those expectations with what we deliver. Mining and remote Aboriginal communities in the Pilbara are a perfect partnership because we can provide the volume of jobs and business opportunity to allow those communities the one precious commodity that they can't get from anything else, and that is opportunity. There is generally no shortage of cash in those communities, but what there is is a dreadful shortage of opportunity. So we today have provided around 1,100 jobs, and more importantly, as Kevin mentioned in the intro, 1.8 billion of contracts to Aboriginal companies and their joint venture partners. A lot of that has come through our VTEC training and through our billion opportunities, and we intend to continue doing that develop, to develop cap capacity and capability in those remote communities. We have the perfect opportunity for partnership. So let me finish today by coming back to where we started. We're very proud at Fortescue to be a West Australian company, to have developed very quickly to become the lowest cost and one of the largest iron ore producers in the world. Our products are helping fuel the growth in Asia to satisfy that enormous demand that's going to be there as those economies urbanise and industrialise. And we focused very much on ensuring that our assets are world class and that we have built, built the most efficient and productive machines that we can. But at the end of the day, they're just the same as everybody else's pieces of yellow equipment or machines. It is truly our world class people that differentiate us at Fortescue. And that's why we want to continue working very closely with our communities to continue building innovation, bringing new ideas, 
better technologies and processes into the mining industry to ensure that we continue to be a vibrant part of Western Australia. Thank you.